Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about CD, a command that you probably run all the time. Um, but I'm going to clear up some confusion about it in that it's not an executable and kind of talk you through how a working directory works and stuff like that. Anyway, let's jump into it. So I see this mistake made a lot, uh, and this is actually some code, well, paraphrase because I don't remember the exact code. Uh, this is some similar code to what I saw in my Discord recently. Um, and yes, it used os.system, and you probably should not use os.system. Uh, I have another video on that that I'll link in the description. Uh, but it basically looked like this. Delete AST pretty if it's there, clone it, and then os.system cd into AST pretty. And then, I don't know, it ran some actual git command, but we're just going to run git status today. And the code looked like this. Uh, I'm going to put a little, some cues in here so it's a little bit quieter, but... Uh, let's run this code, and you'll notice that we just get an error, and that error actually comes from this here. So if we do or get status, so we can see what's going on there, you'll see that it produces an error here. And otherwise, these three commands succeed, including this CD here. But this CD is actually doing nothing. <laughs> and that's because CD is not an executable. If you run type CD in a shell, you'll see that CD is a shell built-in. So it's not actually a command. Um, some older systems will have it as user bin CD, but it doesn't actually do anything. Um, I believe the definition of working directory actually changed in a very, very old version of Unix long before I ever <laughs> touched computers. Um, but you know, modern modern shells will or modern shells and modern, modern Linux distributions won't have a CD executable. And the reason for this is, is the current working directory is a property of your current process. Uh, it's not a you know it's it's not something you can call an external command and have it change your current process's working directory. Uh, it'll just change the working directory in that sub process. And so each process has their own working directory. It gets inherited. So if I were to, I don't know, C to temp and then open Python 3 and look at os.getcwd, it will get inherited from the parent process. Now, even if I were to background this and change to something else and then foreground it, um, and if we do os.getcwd again, you'll see that this process still keeps its own working directory. So even if the parent process changes working directory after spawning it, it doesn't affect the subprocess. And the same is true in the other direction. If we do os.chdir to, let's say, home, and then uh, background this again, I'm using control Z here at the background. I did another video on that, so I'll, I'll link that as well. Usually I don't like to foreground and background because it makes the video a lot more confusing. Um, but you'll see that the working directory in the parent process isn't changed at all. So each process has their own working directory and changing those does not affect the parent process or the child process. Neither of them can affect each other's working directory, except at beginning. So except when you start the process, it will inherit it, but you can't modify it. And so it's actually happening here. Uh, and this is another side effect of os.system. If we had used the better subprocess.call, for instance, subprocess.call, uh, cd ast pretty uh, subprocess would have helpfully told us that there's no there's no such executable cd let me actually close this other shell that we had or the python interpreter that we had back there yeah so subprocess to call would helpfully have told us that there is no uh no such file or directory cd uh, and we can actually kind of restore the os.system behavior by doing shell equals true to make it a little bit more obvious what's going on uh, and you'll see this now runs again, but <clears throat> you know, still still fails. So what's actually happening here is there is a shell that's being created, uh, something like this, CD AST pretty, <clears throat> and this shell successfully CDs into AST pretty and then exits. And since the shell itself cannot affect the parent process, working directory doesn't change at all. So it looks, you know, <laughs> it looks like it works, but it silently does kind of kind of nothing. So this is essentially what happens here. Whereas uh, what you would need to do is actually change the working directory. And you can do that in Python with os.chdir, which I showed you earlier. Uh, you can also, if we're not using os.system, subprocess.call, uh, you can use the cwd uh, parameter to subprocess.call. And so that will 
great if I can spell. <laughs> and that will run, run that process in that working directory. Uh, and you can also use you know, command specific uh, parameters. I think I did a video on this as well. So Git has a special little thing that lets you change the working directory as, a, as an argument. Not all tools support this, but Git is one. Uh, but anyway, hopefully that clears a few things up. Uh, you know, CD is not, not an executable. It's a shell built in, at least in, in bash and sh. Uh, and working directory is not modifiable from another process. Now, this is <laughs> not necessarily true on Windows. So on Windows, you'll have a little bit of a different situation. Um, but you know, Windows is weird, so we're going to ignore that. Now, there is one thing that kind of looks like you're running another process where you can actually modify the working directory. Uh, and this is specific to shells. And that is when you source a file. And I think I did, did I do a video about sourcing? <laughs> sourcing versus execution. If not, I should probably do one of those. Let me see. I got 400 videos. I'm having trouble remembering all, all of them. Uh, yes, OK, I did do a video on source. So I'll try and remember to link that in the description as well. Um, but you know, if we were to run this using bash, bash t.sh, it's going to, oops, just need slash home. Uh, do, do, do. If we were to run this, you know, it'll CD, but not actually change the working directory. But if we source that file, that will run it in the current shell. So source is not actually executing it. It's, it's basically reading the contents of the file and then running them as shell commands. So it's a little bit different. Uh, but anyway, hopefully you found this interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.